For the last few decades, dinosaurs have made it into the mainstream media. They've been featured in films, television shows, and books. Throughout the history of our planet, untold billions of species have come and gone throughout the ages, facing extinction-level events that required new life to take on different forms. To this day though, people are able to get their hands on ancient relics of the past, and these include things like dinosaur teeth and bones. Although these ancient giants have been extinct for many years now, they still interest us to this day, and although we know a lot about them, there's still an air of mystery surrounding them. The idea that birds, including chickens, evolved from dinosaurs isn't something that's new. This theory has been around since the 19th century. This was when scientists found fossils of a bird with the name of Archaeopteryx. The bird had feathers and wings but it had the features of a dinosaur, and some more fossils found more recently suggested it looked similar to a chicken. Archaeopteryx came onto the scene in the 1860s, and surprised researchers when they discovered that it had several unbird-like features. For example, researchers at the time noticed that it had sharp teeth, claws on each hand and a feathery coat. Interestingly, going back a few years ago, biologists took it upon themselves to carry out a test which would show them what a chicken and a dinosaur hybrid would look like. The scientists working on the project were able to isolate clusters of genes that aid in facial development. The team was then able to discover a way of stopping them in the chicken's embryo. After doing this, what they were left with was an animal that looked very similar to what a Velociraptor would have looked like. The lead author of the study, Bart Andrzej Yala from Yale University said the following, We had not set out to create a dinosaur chicken. When examining an important evolutionary transformation, we wanted to find out the underlying process. The beak is the part of the avian skeleton that is most extensively and radically diversified. We wanted to find out if the beak was functional. The scientists wanted to highlight the fact that the beak develops in a much different way to snouts. This is because they use a different set of genes. This proves that the beak is an adaption, as opposed to being a nose shape that is slightly different. Michael Benton from the Bristol University in the UK said the following, I believe that the move from the snout to a beak occurred around 40 to 50 million years after the Archaeopteryx. As of right now, the scientists have no plans to hatch these raptor-looking chickens. The scientists went on to say the following, these weren't drastic modifications. They are far less weird than many breeds of chickens developed by chicken hobbyists and breeders. The rest of the animal looked okay, but one needs to think about this carefully from an ethical point of view. In other news, it was announced not so long ago that scientists in Russia and South Korea plan to bring back prehistoric creatures. The team are currently carrying out research in a lab that costs $5.9 million to build. They hope to study animals that were once extinct by looking at their cells. Some of the creatures they are looking at bringing back include the cave lion, woolly mammoth, woolly rhino and species of horses. At this point in time, researchers have said this is near impossible to do with dinosaurs, but some of these Ice Age creatures still have intact tissues and cells which makes this process much easier. This is no longer a fantasy. Scientists from Harvard and Russia have already delved into mixing genes to bring back species that are extinct. They want to put woolly mammoth genes into an Asian elephant and they plan to do this by the end of 2020. Back in 2005, a controversial discovery was made when a paleontologist discovered one of ancient Earth's most impressive predators. Trinosaurus rex has gone down in history as being one of the most well-known dinosaurs. This tyrant lizard king would have ruled the Cretaceous 66 million years ago. It's well known that the Tyrannosaurus rex had the strongest bite of any land animal. This has been proven with recent computer simulations. This giant predator would have crushed its prey with over 13,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. The king of the dinosaurs needed thick neck muscles to hold up its large skull and power its forceful bite. The Tyrannosaurus rex was one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs that ever lived. It measured up to 43 feet long and weighed as much as 7 tons. Over the years, there has been heated debate about how T-Rex hunted. First, it was thought that this predator actively went after its prey. Then paleontologists changed their mind and suggested that Tyrannosaurus rex was actually a scavenger. It turns out, however, that it most likely did both. 
as teeth have been found embedded inside herbivores. T. rex would have fed on the large herbivores of the Cretaceous. This would have included Triceratops. It's been theorized that Tyrannosaurus rex had a secret to taking down these large animals. Going after an 8-ton Triceratops would have been risky, even for T. rex. These giant predators, although powerful, had to be careful of their prey's weapons. Triceratops had large horns and frills. If they were able to hit a T-Rex with these, it would do an incredible amount of damage. However, it's been put forward that Tyrannosaurus rex had a septic bite. This giant would have had to have consumed over 500 kilograms of meat per day. T-Rex's teeth had very sharp serrations and it's been theorized that meat would have got stuck in inside there. This rotten flesh inside their teeth would have contained a massive amount of bacteria. Paleontologists suggested that T-Rex used this way to take down its prey. It would simply bite the herbivore anywhere on its body and then wait for the infection to kick in. This would only take a matter of days, and while this was happening the T-Rex would be tracking it the entire time. Once the Triceratops was weak the T-Rex would go in for the final blow. A few years back a 68 million year old bone from a T-Rex was found that had soft tissue inside, and right from the get go this discovery left people with many questions. The discovery was made by Mary Schweitzer, a molecular paleontologist at North Carolina State University. The discovery was made in 2005 when her and her team found the T-Rex. Soft tissue and blood was found inside this Tyrannosaurus rex specimen. Even other scientists were confused as they thought soft tissue should degrade in less than 1 million years, and here you have a 65 million year old fossil that's still showing soft tissue. However, as of today, new research has suggested that iron in the dinosaur's body preserved the tissue before it could decay. One thing that paleontologists have questioned over the years is how this creature walked. When first discovered, it's thought that T-Rex stood on its back legs with its tail dragging on the ground. However, it's now believed that T-Rex walks similar to modern day birds, with their tail in the air and head face forwards. Recently, scientists devised an interesting way to find out what Tyrannosaurus rex would have looked like while walking. Researchers from the University of Chile and the University of Chicago decided to use live chickens. Scientists have said that chickens are the closest living relative of the T-Rex, so using them in the study was important. The researchers placed a fake dinosaur tail to the birds. The researchers believe that modern day birds such as chickens inherited the way they moved from their dinosaur ancestors. The prosthetic limbs were made from a wooden stick and modeling clay and attached to the birds. It's been put forward that the tail mass of a T-Rex would have equal to around 15% of its body mass, and they made sure this was the same for the chicken. One of the researchers said the following. Here we show that by manipulating the location of the center of mass in living birds, it's possible to recreate limb posture. Chickens raise wearing artificial tails and consequently with more posteriorly located center of mass, showed a more vertical orientation of the femur during standing, and increased femoral displacement during locomotion. Although this study has helped us to understand how T-Rex may have walked, dinosaurs still remain a mystery of our past. There are still many questions that need to be answered. Every year scientists and researchers are uncovering more dinosaur specimens that are helping us to better understand what life would have been like millions of years ago. A new species of dinosaur called Weewarasaurus has been discovered from an opal mine in Weewara. This is close to Lightning Ridge Town in Australia's outback. The fossil found in the mine is of a reptile the size of a dog that walked on its hind legs and existed around 100 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. Weewarasaurus belonged to a group of dinosaurs known as ornithopods, which are known for eating plants and having beaks with serrated teeth. Ornithopods were abundant in Lightning Ridge in prehistoric times, and it's believed they moved in packs to protect themselves from harm. The fossil was originally found and excavated by miners in 2013 in a mine at Weewara. So my question to you guys is what do you make of these recent dinosaur discoveries? And if you had the choice, would you bring back the dinosaurs? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries.
Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.